All right, what's going on everyone? It's my first ever YouTube video. My name is Chebo. I self-proclaimed TikTok CEO of Burgers. A bit of an ambitious claim, but um, I guess it is what it is. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna be going through my perfect homemade burger tutorial. So in my food truck, we use wholesale ingredients from wholesale suppliers, so like top quality stuff. Um, however, obviously not everyone can have access to that. So what I'm gonna do is go to Coles, Woolies and Audi and pick out the best ingredients, in my opinion, for the best homemade smash burger. Um, I'm gonna go pick them up now run through it all, give you the step-by-steps ingredients, and go from there. Now hop in the Ferrari and we'll head to the shops. With my cooking journey, I started off cooking burgers for friends and family, that kind of thing, and eventually evolved to a point where I was hosting, like, where I was catering for my sister's birthday, my cousin's birthdays, um, and I really, really enjoyed it, and so I asked myself, why not make something out of it? So I started Chevo's Burgers as a side hustle originally, and so far, it's blown up since then. Um, We've done very well. I've had, I've now have my own food truck opening on the weekends. Got a lot of notoriety um, within the burger game, and it's a really good way to, I guess, work but enjoy it as well, that kind of thing. And so now with my TikTok career, I started off just making burgers, and at the end of the day, there's only so many burgers you can make, right? So now I've gotten into steaks, I've gotten into brisket, smoking meat, even like doing a bit of like pasta, rice, that kind of thing. But it's fun and I've, I guess I've noticed or I've grown a passion for cooking where I didn't really have one before. And I guess the experience in the kitchen, um, I guess, developed it for me. And so what I'd encourage to anyone, just like I didn't know how to cook before at all, um, just get in there, get some experience, get some reps in the kitchen. It's fun, you know? Follow ingredients, follow recipes, be adventurous with your recipes. All right, first stop, Coles. How's your day been? Good? Yeah, good, you? Yeah, living the dream, man. What have you guys been up to? Just chilling? Yeah, recording some videos. All right, we've just had a brief interruption. All right, so uh, I'm never able to say no to those. I feel so bad, but oh well. So brown onions I prefer the most. Some people prefer red, but I don't know. These ones just go the worst with burgers, in my opinion. Tomatoes, you're not really fussed about what to get. Typically, just the wider, the better. So you're using one big slice, but we'll go with one of these ones. Right, so now we've made it to the cheese section. Typically people go for like this plasticky sliced cheese wrapped in plastic. I'm not a fan of that at all. Um, maybe for like your lunch sandwich, but not for burgers. Now if you come down here, what it is, they're typically hidden away, but Dairy Lee burger slices, they are amazing. It's got that yellow American cheese. I don't know if you can see that there, um, but pretty much your best option if you want burgers at home. For lettuce, you can go iceberg, um, but I prefer green oak leaf. It looks the best. Uh, looks the best, tastes the best, good texture, simple and easy. Coles burger sauce is a pretty safe, sold option if you're not bothered making your own sauce. Um, however, we're going to go through the effort and do it today for the purpose I guess showing you guys. And yeah, The homemade burger sauce, we're going to first start with ketchup, American mustard. You're going to go with a chili powder of choice. And now, add some gherkin relish. Did I get everything? Coles sells these great sliced burger pickles. They go very, very good. That's a chubby bun. No, chubby's, yeah. Yo, chubby buns. <laughs> Can I get a photo with you, mate? Nah, man. Disrespect. Disrespect. Now, these are typically always sold out. Um, lucky we're in nice and early. They're the Audi brioche buns. $2.50, $2 you can get them. They're probably the best ones, in my opinion. Woolies does sell some decent ones, but these ones have good volume, good taste. Easy to go. It's from Coles and Audi. Um, so if you're Aussie, you know where to go, what to get. You can be flexible with like the lettuce, the tomato, um, that kind of thing. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not a game breaker. Um, and if you're outside of Australia, you've seen the products, you can get alternatives or whatever. I'm pretty sure you'd have your own alternatives in your own supermarkets. And so now all we're missing is the beef. With beef, it's typically got to be 20% fat. Um, beef mints can be flexible with the fat percentage, as long as there's enough there to give it the flavor, the nice sort of taste. I don't like beef patties that are pre-made, typically because they put in a lot of spices and not enough fat, and you're getting this, you're not getting the best flavor, you know? I, in my opinion, with a smash burger, all you need is salt um, and that nice thin crust, which is given by the fat percentage. And so now we're gonna go to the butcher and pick some up. You can go Woolies, can go Coles and get their pre-packed um, beef mince packets, they do fine, um, but for the sake of this, we're just gonna go what a smash burger is if you've never had one or seen one before pretty much it's a ball of meat beef mince not a beef patty um smashed against the grill slash griddle um where you're developing a nice maillard reaction which is caramelization of the fat and you're getting a nice crust on the meat patty 
What that does, it caramelizes the fat and gives you an amazing flavor where all you need is salt to bring through that nice, tasty, patty feeling taste. Yeah. So if you've ever been to Shake Shack, they do smash patties and you might know that, and you might not know, but a lot of your local burger joints might do them too. Um, I, to, to certain extents, I do smash patties for my own burgers. We use 95 gram balls of beef mince. Um, I feel like that's the perfect ratio of crust to meat. If, you, if you're putting too much meat in there, it does get a bit chewy, um, and you do need to supplement it with some spices like onion powder, garlic powder, that kind of thing. So I prefer like a nice thin patty where you're getting the nice crust, nice meat, salt's all you need. And if you feel like more, you can go for a double or a triple. Um, a comment that I typically do get on TikTok is people asking, oh, that's not enough meat. I mean, you can go for doubles and triples if you want. Like, I mean, up to you. Welcome to Punch Bowl. I'm gonna get some halal meat. Um, you should be able to ask your butcher and they can get you some 20% fat beef mince. A lot of butchers will do it. Um, but yeah, like I said before, it doesn't have to be exactly 20%, like you'll be fine. Hey Trevor, this is recording, but uh, do you have yeah. a girlfriend? No way, bro. I've <laughs> got no time, bro. I'm in my bag. I'm in my bag. I can't afford that. Look, man, that video I posted of you, a lot of people said you were a good looking man. Look, man, I, I am a part time supermodel, but you know, girlfriend, I just can't do it. I'm looking at Applications open. Are you? I was watching you yesterday, actually. <laughs> Thank you very much. Awesome. <laughs> so on YouTube, my first ever YouTube video. All right, so we've got our beef mince and our steak for later. Now we're gonna go home, cook it up, and go through it one by one. All of this did cost around, I'd say, like forty dollars, including the meat, buns, whatever, not including the equipment. Um, so to start off, I do have a cast iron pan. If you're wondering why cast iron, for a smash burger to be perfect, you need it to stick. So you need the meat to stick to the surface. A lot of people message me on Instagram complaining about it sticking, and so when they try and flip, they're leaving all this crust on the bottom. What you need to do is get a, spot, a sharp spatula. Um, you can use a paint scraper, this is a very sharp one as well. And so after you smash and after the meat binds to the surface, that's where you get the crust. And you use the very sharp spatula to scrape it off. And once you've scraped it off effectively, that's your crust and that's your smash burger. I have mentioned all the ingredients in the description, so if you missed them, be sure to check it out. Um, and as I mentioned before, you can be flexible with them, it's not concrete. Now for our tomatoes, um, just thin slices once again. Nothing too fancy, um, cut to your desired thickness. We will use two slices in this burger just because the tomatoes aren't... Oh, that's terrible. I'm gonna get butchered in the comment section for these knife skills. All right, so I drain the pickles a bit, take some out and use them for the burger. All right, now for our sauce. Um, we're gonna make a typical special sauce. Special sauces are, in my opinion, the best sauce you can put in a burger. Pretty much the best of everything. So you've got your mustard, your mayo, your ketchup um, in a nice blend so that nothing's too overpowering. So for example, a ketchup only burger, I find it a bit too salty. Mustard only burger, no, it's a mustard only burger. Um, mayo is a bit too creamy. And so combining all these sauces and ingredients gives you like a nice balanced taste. And in my opinion, yeah, just the best. We're gonna go two thirds of mayo. For the remaining one third, you're gonna go half ketchup and half mustard. So in essence, you're going two thirds mayo, a sixth mustard and a sixth ketchup. Excuse my maths if I'm wrong. You're gonna go a touch of black pepper, touch of normal salt, a bit of chili of choice. This is Mexican chili powder. Finally, some gherkins. And now we give it a mix. Now this is the ideal color you want. It's like a creamy, yellowy burger sauce. And for the taste test, if you can feel a nice tang in your jaw, then you know it's just right. Now we've got our beef mince. You wanna go for around 95 to 100 grams. That's the perfect size in my opinion till it sits around comfortably in your palm. For our buns, you can go without any spread to toast them. You can go with butter. I'm gonna show you the mayo trick. This is from Nick Giovanni on TikTok. Shout out to him for showing me this. So pretty much get your mayo, spread it on there in a nice, nice thin layer and toast it and that's all you need. Now we're gonna crank this one to around the medium high. What you want is to see a bit of smoke coming off the surface. So today I'm using my own Chebo Smasher. You can use the bottom of a spatula as I've used before, the bottom of a plate, the bottom of a pot. A lot of people have sent me different things that they use. Um, smash out in my opinion is the easiest thing. Stainless steel, easy to clean. Um, push down and Bob's your uncle. 
And so when you're smashing, you're not necessarily smashing. A way that I like to think about it is that you're spreading the meat on the surface. So you're spreading it to the shape that you want, allowing it to bind to the surface, so that when you scrape it off, you've got a nice, perfectly portioned patty with a nice amount of crust. Now what I like to do to test the right temp is a water test, where you pretty much splash some water on it and see how fast it evaporates. If it evaporates straight away, you're good. If it takes a while, you need a bit more. However, if the water does not sit on the surface and beads around, that means your surface is too hot and it won't allow the meat to bind properly to the surface. I don't like to use oil because if you're using beef with the right amount of fat, that's all you're going to need. So place down, press, hold for a couple seconds, twist, and slide off. There you go. Now it's not a perfect circle, but now we're going to hit it lightly with some salt. So we know it's done when we see the edges starting to curl up there, and you see a lot of grey areas and the juice is starting to bubble through. Now when it's time to flip, the most important thing to save your crust, I like to use the bottom end of the spatula, scrape it off. There you go. Now all that brown crust is what you want. You're going to cheese it, let that melt, and once again we're using American cheese so it can melt nice and tight into the crevices and it works real with the meat. You get some toast on the buns, place them down. Because the heat's high, it's got a bit of a burn, but for the most part, look how nice that looks. So now, while this is still cooking, we're going to start dressing our burger. We're going to layer a nice layer of special sauce on the bottom there. Rip your lettuce to size, don't be afraid to cut and chop and whatever. Lay that down there. Two slices of tomato, some onion rings, some pickles. And if you're wondering why I layer them all on the bottom instead of on the top of the patty, so that the burger is able to be weighed down by the meat and not fall all over the place. Place that one there. Place that on top. There you go, your homemade Chebos. And so there you have it. There's your homemade Chebos burger. You can go double patty, triple patty, add some bacon, minus the pickles, whatever you want. Make it yours. At the end of the day, it's your burger. Um, but that's pretty much in essence it. So tips to remember for your perfect crust, make sure you've got the right fat percentage, the heat and the stick surface. And that's all you need to create a perfect smash burger. Um, have fun, make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok, only Chebo on TikTok, Chebo's Burgers on Instagram. Send me your creations, get involved. Um, I love to see people's burgers. Um, and keep an eye out for these burger smashes because they're gonna be dropping real, real soon. Thanks for tuning in. Mm. Now drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.